Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. A couple of more inequalities. The first one there, x plus 2 in a bracket by x minus 1 in a bracket is less than 0. So it's asking you to solve these inequalities. OK, well, this in its previous life would have been a quadratic. Um, it would have been, if I multiply it out, x by x, x squared, x by minus 1 minus x plus 2x, as that minus 2 is equal to 0. So it would have been x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. OK, so somebody's gone to the bother of factorizing it for us, which makes it easier to solve. Um, x plus 2 is equal to 0. It holds one of my um, roots and x minus 2 or x minus 1 holds my other root. So if I was to solve this, x is equal to minus 2. The same in this one, x is to one side, numbers to the other, x will be equal to 1. OK, so that's just, again, the first line of a quadratic, the second line of a quadratic, and then solving it. So these are what's called your critical values. OK, and not every book, not every teacher calls them that. So if you haven't heard the term, that's that's OK, too. Um, I like the term because it, it signifies that you're not finished with that sum. There is more to do. So I'm not saying they're the solutions. They are what's called the critical values. And the reason that they're not the solutions is because to get them, I substituted in as an equals to sign and I dropped my inequality sign. OK, so my critical values are minus two and one. So now there's two ways of, of, of finishing this off or for solving it. Um, one is, is a graph method. If, if, if I manage to draw a relatively straight graph. OK. And my critical values are when you solve a quadratic and you get these two values at the end, they are where it cuts through the x-axis. OK, so x equals x equals. They're also called the roots. OK, so 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2. And it doesn't matter what's on my, my y-axis. I don't know what's on my y-axis. So these are where it cuts through the um, the x-axis, so at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 2. OK, so they are my two critical values marked onto the graph. Now, the reason I worked out the original quadratic was I wanted to know, would it be a smiley face or a sad face? OK, smiley face being a, a quadratic that looks like that, a sad face being a frown, one that looks like that. And you tell from the sign in front of x squared. If that's positive, it's happy. If it's negative, it's sad. OK, um, so what does that mean? Well, that means that I know my graph roughly goes like that. OK, don't know how far it comes down here um, or how steep it goes up there. I also don't care for, for inequality signs, OK? Um, and this is the reason why. So this question asks you, where is this function less than 0, OK? So there's two places it could be less than 0. It could be down here. Well, that's the only place it's less than 0. And this is what we call above 0, OK? This line in the middle is what I refer to as my zero line, OK? It's where your output y is equal to zero. So you're comparing it to this line here. So when it asks for values less than zero, you are down in this section all the way down here, OK? That goes all the way over to the right. I just don't want to, I suppose, cover in the graph, OK? And then. So that's less than zero. And then up the top up here is when you're greater than zero. OK, so just like if you think back to the previous one, we were talking about football and, and inequality has been a, a range of values. OK, and an equals to sign is set values, just like here. But an inequality is a range of values. So is this graph less than zero between minus two and one? or outside 
of minus two and one. Okay, so on this graph, you would see it's less than zero between those two values. Okay, and I'm just following my graph just there. Okay, so therefore the solution to this one is, is x lies between one and minus two. Okay, they are when that graph is less than zero. Okay, now you're not asked it, but let's have a look of, of what we'd write if it was greater than zero. Okay, so if greater than zero, if we were asked that, okay, if this had been greater than zero, well, we're greater than zero up here. Anytime our graph goes above the zero line. So you can see it's up here and it's up here. And these lines go on forever, okay? They go off my screen up there, okay? And the same in this side, except it's gonna go off much quicker. So to describe that, that is any value of X that is less than minus two. So we are greater than zero when X is less than minus two and when x is greater than one, because isn't that the area where x is greater than one? Okay. So that's just an aside if that's what you had been asked. Okay. But this one here is the solution to this question here. Right. Let's have a look at another one, this question two. Um, and we have to solve it. We have to find the critical values. That's the first thing. We then have to um, test it or using a graph or a value. I'm going to change the way I, I test this one just to show you the two options. Um, but the first thing we have to do is find those critical values. So like any other quadratic, we would factorize it. So we get two X and X. Um, my guide number is minus 12 if you wish. And um, so that I'll end up with um, a four and a three. I might just do it out the long way for anybody who, yeah, for anybody who's not sure, let, let me just take the time and do it out the long way. Um, so when I'm doing these ones, when there's a number in front of X, okay, I, I tend to take my guide number as being two times minus six. AC is what it's called. AX squared plus BX plus C. So that's my A and my C. Okay, so that's where I got my minus 12 for my guide number. Okay, and I'm looking for factors that will give me, that will sum together or add together to give me that minus one that sits there in the middle. Okay, so that's why I'm thinking four and three. Okay, so I could have plus four minus three or minus four plus three. Uh, why? Because opposite signs plus by minus gives me this minus up the top. So minus four and plus three are the two obvious ones there because minus four plus three is minus one. So what you do is you, instead of writing out the minus one X that's here, you write out minus four X plus three X. Okay, because don't they sum together to give you that minus one? And I got these values from here. Okay, minus six is equal to zero. Okay, and then you do grouping. If you remember grouping from junior cert, where you take out what's common here and here. I'll have X minus two, and then I group together these two, and you can see that it's three that's common. X minus two again, and you know you're right when the two brackets in the middle are the same. Then to finish it off, you put the two outer terms in one bracket and you write down the inner one. Okay, so a little revision of grouping. So let's solve these. 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. x minus 2 is equal to 0. 2x is equal to minus 3. x is equal to minus 3 over 2. x is equal to 2. Okay, so these are my critical values. Okay, so there is another way of doing it and, and I might do it both ways. I might do it the graph way to give you more practice of it. So if you're okay, I'm going to 
wipe off the graph here just to give us a bit of space. But there is another method, which is you test a value between your two critical values. OK, I have minus three over two and I've plus two. So an easy critical value when you have one number that's a plus and one that's a minus like we do here, zero is an easy number to test. OK, so test zero. So what you do is you put zero into your original function as such, OK, and you see, is it less than or equal to zero? OK, the theory being zero lies between those two numbers. So if this holds, if it's true, then my solution is between those two numbers. And if this doesn't hold, then my solution must be outside of these two numbers. OK, so I've got two zeros are zero, minus zero is zero. So I'm getting minus six is less than or equal to zero. Well, minus six is less than zero, so it's true. OK, therefore, um, the solutions to this sum must lie between minus three over two and two. And it must be that case because I tested one of the values between them and it worked. OK, so minus three over two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to two is my answer. OK, and just to show you um, what happens if I test a value outside of these. OK, so I'm done here, but I just want to show you one step more, which is what if I test? Let's test three because three is outside of these values. OK. And what we should find is that this will not hold true because the set of solutions to this that are less than zero lie between these. So let's test three and see is that true? Minus three, minus six. Is that less than or equal to zero? Well, three squared, three threes are nine by two is 18 minus nine. So 18 minus nine plus nine is not less than zero. OK, and that's what I expected because zero held, three couldn't held, hold. OK. So that's one way of doing it. And, and a lot of students like that way. They, 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 um, they understand it better than the graph and that's perfectly fine. So it doesn't matter really which way you choose to test. OK. The other way, of course, is the graph that we did in the last one. OK, again, we're looking up. It's a smiley face again because it's a plus um, in front of my x squared. My critical values is minus 3 over 2, which is minus 1 and a half and 2. So if I draw my graph, OK, where is this graph less than or equal to 0? OK, so you can see down here is my less than zero. Up here is my greater than zero. And of course, that line there is the zero line. OK, so you can see that this graph is less than zero between minus three over two and two. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.